All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be working on a problem with this Ubiquiti Networks Edge Router 3 Lite router. And if you got this kind of problem where the whole network is down and the power light here is just blinking a steady green here, just like that, well, then I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's not a bad repair. All right, guys, so this flashing light, if we were to bring the power brick up here, what you'll notice with this particular problem is they're both flashing, right? And they're roughly flashing in unison. And so this is our first clue that this problem has got nothing to do with the edge router, but it's related to the power supply itself. Now there's one other symptom on this I'll try to get for you. We'll kind of zoom in really close. And if you're on the younger side, you'll detect there's a high pitch kind of noise coming from this area of the edge router. And that's the other symptom with this particular problem where you've got a power supply issue. So let me give you a shot of that sound, and then we'll go over what you need to do to replace this power supply. All right, guys, so if we have this plugged in, it's got a steady green power light. It looks like it's fine, right? If we kind of wedge it back here behind our little table here just for a second. And then we take the output, barrels ground, like we saw from the label, center pins positive. It says it's outputting 12.12 volts. So what's up? So this is an example where a simple test like this is insufficient to test the power supply. The problem that's happening is not a voltage problem. The problem that's happening is when you get a draw or amperage pull on this power supply that it's failing. So the, this is you know just showing you that don't just trust the voltage to tell you it's not the power supply. If we were to put a load on this like a light bulb or something, we would see this power here flicker because the power for the LED is also coming from the same circuit. So it's the same kind of problem as where the edge router is getting starved out. So this is definitely a dead power supply. Now, could we rebuild it or repair it? Right. So it's got a seam around the other outside edge here, right? So you could crack this open and pull it apart. There's no schematics. And in my experience, a lot of times in these types of um, power supplies that are built on contract for companies like Ubiquity, the interior parts are not going to be marked well. So if there's any semiconductors on there, you're not going to be able to tell what they are. It's just not worth it. It's better in this particular case to just replace it. Also, you know, if you make a mistake, something like that, it could easily be a shock hazard or a fire hazard. So I don't recommend trying to repair these. Just replace them. All right, so here's our original edge router power supply from Ubiquity. And there's a couple of things that you'll need to know about replacing it, right? Because they don't sell replacement parts. So first off is there's a model number on here from Ubiquity. This guy right here. If we zoom in close enough, you can make out the GPF120-100 model number. So that's something that's useful to search on, although they don't sell this. So the more pertinent information is right down here on the output side. So this is what the power supply puts out. You see it says 12 volts, 12V. And this symbol next to it with a, a solid line and a dash line indicates direct current. So what that tells you is this guy puts out 12 volts direct current at 1 amp. So that's part of the information you need to know. The other thing is you'll find on these power supplies, and in this case it's right down here, this is the polarity of the plug. So what this is telling you is that the outer shell of the plug is negative and the center pin is positive. So that's something else you need to know in order to locate a replacement. Now if we take a look at the plug itself, you zoom back out here a little bit. Got this kind of a barrel plug. And there's several different types of these. On this Ubiquity one, the outer is five and a half millimeters, and the inner is 2.1 roughly. 2.1 millimeters. So this is a five and a half by 2.1 millimeter barrel plug. So now you know the size, you know the voltage and you know the amperage, and you know that the outside shell is negative and the center pin is positive. You, you want to make sure you do not get a different voltage on the replacement. So if you get too low of a voltage, let's say you put a 9 volt down here, then it won't harm the edge router, but it likely won't correctly run it reliably either because it needs at least 12 volts. If you get more than 12 volts, there is a possibility you'll damage the edge router. So you definitely want to get it exactly 12 volts. But you don't need to get the amperage exact. You need to have at least the same as one amp, but you can have more. So if you have a, a power supply that's got one and a half or two amps, that's fine. The edge router will only draw the amperage it needs. But if you try using a smaller one that's, say, maybe 500 milliamps, 
that's likely not going to be enough current for the edge router. Again, it won't hurt the edge router, but you may damage the power supply when the edge router's under load and wanting full capability. So let me show you a, a good emergency power supply. So if you want to get the LAN back up running quick, you can go through your house and try to find all these different adapters. And I happen to find one here just to show you an example. So this one here, if we zoom in on this guy, we can see he's very close to meet our specifications, right? So we can see on the universal symbol for the um, connector itself, if we get that to focus, right? The outer shell is negative, the center pin is positive, that's good. Our output is 12 volts, there's our DC symbol, and in this case it's one and a half amps, and like I said, one and a half amps is fine. If this had said just 0.5 amps, that would, be, that would not be good, that'd be only 500 milliamps, and that's not enough power to drive this thing. The other differences you'll notice is this is not a grounded plug. Now this will power it, but ultimately when you buy the replacement, I'd suggest you get a grounded plug for safety reasons. And ideally, you find a supply that's like this, that's designed to run 24-7, 365. This one's been running about eight years before it died. You want to get that LED on them. Some of them have them and some of them don't because that helped us identify that this was the problem because we could see that. This one here can work in a pinch and we can get it going. We can notice on this one, our barrel plug is still five and a half on the outside and our center pin, this one came off an external disk drive, is this one is 2.5. So this is a larger size plug. So the larger size plug is not ideal, but it'll work in a pinch. Sometimes you won't get good connections between the center pin on the edge router and the center hole on this between the male and female sides. But this one will work in a pinch if you can't find a 2.1. So let me get this uh, edge router back up online and I'll give you a little bit more information on picking out a replacement and hopefully this will get yours up and running too. All right guys, got my LAN back up and running. I got a couple of these that I used to uh, replace the Ubiquity one. So you can see it's got a similar design. It's a little bit bigger, but it does have a grounded plug on it. And it does have the same kind of barrel connector. It actually even has a noise interference uh, coil on here on the end. And this one here happens to be a 5 volt one, excuse me, a 5 amp one, and that's fine, right? What's more important, like I was saying, is that we get the right polarity in the center and ground on the shell, and that we don't exceed the 12 volts or fall under the, five, the 12 volts. Having 5 amps is fine because the edge router will only take the amperage that it needs. The only concern when you get this high up, I would have preferred to have found something 2 or 3, but I didn't find one at a good price. Um, 5 amps, you just want to do some tests with it because sometimes the efficiency rating on something this high operating very low might give off more heat. But I get a test on this one for about 8 hours and the heating is, is actually cooler than the original, so I think it's going to be fine. And then lastly, it's got the LED on the top when it's powered on, which will help us identify any problems in the future. I'll put some links in the description where you can either find and used one of the original type of ubiquity ones, or you can find something like this, or even something like the emergency one I showed earlier, which is just a, you know, a standard two pin temporary type wall adapter. Anyway, I hope this helps you out. Get your edge router back online, help you identify that problem. Yeah, you can get this fixed you know, within 30 minutes if you can find an adapter laying around the house like the two-pin one I showed you. And then within a week, you can order something like this on Amazon or eBay and get it fixed permanently. If you got questions or comments, leave them below. I'll try to help. If you found this video useful and it got you back up and running, take a moment to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.